That's funny. Raw AEW. What an old file. Oh! Hello, folks. Welcome again. I am the one, the only Hobo Tom. And again, the seat's empty. My imaginary girlfriend's not here. Oh, well. The show must go on one day. My cat's asleep in her bed. It's a comfy sleeping temperature. And I'm going to get sleep tonight after I do my hoboing. So I need more aluminum. No such thing as too much aluminum. Too much aluminum. That's about some AEW wrestling. Wow, I've done a lot of wrestling shows. And next week, Monday, Tuesday, probably triple Tuesday. I should probably, triple, yeah, double Tuesday, one Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Oh, wow. Oh, wait, no. Yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Wow. So much pro wrestling to cover. I guess it's that time of year. So, with AEW tonight, again, I kind of ran out of pages on my notebook, so I have to go the, the old fashioned legal pad, or at least here. Um, so, I can't prop it up as nice as it doesn't sit. Kind of, I still have the, the fan going. For some reason, the circulator feels pretty good. It's not there, it just gets stagnant. Um, so, they do a quick recap of Kenny Omega. He, he's all kinds of messed up. He has a pretty nasty looking black eye that I think Riho gave him with cosmetics. Because Riho was there while looking on. Um, Kenny Omega's not clear to wrestle. His back's all messed up. You knew that was going to happen. Um, uh, John Mossy comes out. He actually looks fine. He takes on, Mike, on Michael Nakazawa. Uh, quick match. Uh, Michael Nakazawa normally oils himself up. No oil this time. Uh, he just got beat up. Uh, he went over Moxley. He tried to go after Moxley. Did not work out too well for him. Uh, Moxley is a quick match. It's a paradigm shift. Match over! Um, if it wasn't for the fact that that, Mox, that John Moxley then cut a New Japan pro wrestling style promo saying, fight me. I mean, it would have been worse. Would have been quick. Um, wasn't bad though. For the most part, this was a ham sandwich. And that's the weird thing about the show. They had a lot more promos in it. The matches were shorter. Yeah, because there were. I think, with the exception of the one match. There was, yeah, I think every other match was like around 10 minutes. A lot of promos, though. Are they trying to copy WWE? Not a bright idea. And then the next match, it was the Dark Order versus Jurassic Express. And this featured the Jungle Boy and Marco Stunt. This was fun, because this, this is what the Dark Order kind of needed. Uh, Marco starts starts out. He goes over. Quick, very quick moves, quick tags in and out. So Jungle Boy gets in. And the fast. This is actually a really fast paced match. I was shocked, especially whenever Jungle Boy and Marco Stunt was there. That makes sense. They say Marco stunts 117 pounds. Jungle Boy is bigger. But, like, combined, they're only, like, 200-something pounds for a tag team? Heck, Evil Uno weighs that much by himself. And I think, only because it was mentioned, if Marco Stunt teamed up with Riho, I almost want to say they'd be under 200 pounds for a tag team. Because I know Riho's only, like, 90 pounds, so yeah, like 210, like 210 pounds? Ugh, that's not good. I, I'm used to my tag team hosses being like, again, with a heavy machinery, like 600 plus pounds, 500 pounds, at minimum like 400 plus pounds. Not even breaking the 300 mark? 
for two people? What kind of pro wrestling is that? Um, Evil Uno, he actually tried to low bridge Marco Stunt by raising the top rope and dropping the bottom rope. That was kind of funny. Uh, Evil Uno was good. Um, and I don't know how Marco Stunt didn't get killed because they did eliminate Jungle Boy. Evil Uno just crushed Marco Stunt. And so did Stu Grayson. Stu Grayson did his, um, oh, 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 he made, he did some move on him. That that's, wasn't even a sta that's amazing standing for the suplex. That's not much. That's like me. I could do that to my nephews, and I'm sure my nephews are about Marco Stunt's weight. So, I mean, that's not, that's impressive looking. Not that impressive looking, though. Uh, again, the double teamwork by Dark Order was excellent. And then there was a true hot tag into Jungle Boy. And again, he lets the heel miss you. There were, there were also some weird botches here, too. Um, that Nightfall Backbreaker by Stu Grayson. Oh, that looked like it broke Marco's stun in half. And then, Fatality! Dude, I don't know how Marco's stun's still alive. But actually, this is good. And the Dark Order needs this, because the Dark Order finally gets a win. And I'll tell you what, it was a good... It was a good cheeseburger match. All the fun part comes at the end. Evil Uno speaks. I forget if Uno ever spoke. He used to kind of do actions, though. I think only if he hit the control pad would he say something. But Evil Uno speaks. He tells Marco Stunt to join the Dark Order. He has the mask already. Uh, the creepers are there. Uh, and then, of course, Jungle Boy comes in to try and make the save. The creepers say, no, not happening. The creepers finally get to beat someone up. I like that. The henchmen get to get to do their work. Luchasaurus comes in, makes the save. Luchasaurus is awesome. Again, this was kind of fun. So again, at least the Dark Order wins. The Jurassic Express, they're just not good. Um, they're they are entertaining to watch, but as far as the tag team ranking system, which you can see at the AEW website, I'll have to put that up one day, is actually there. So that was interesting. Um, then it got very WWE-ish. And after the, the, the product WWE has been putting in, it's not something AEW really wants to copy. Uh, it was Sean Spears, it was a three-way match. Sean Spears versus Peter Avalon versus Darby Allen. Guess who's losing? Um, Peter Avalon, again, he tries to shush someone. Uh, while Sean Spears and Darby Allen are having a stare down. For some reason, Avalon goes up to the top rope, does a splash with no one home. Uh, Darby, Allen, Darby Allen tried to climb the rope because Peter Avalon was on the outside. He just got shoved by Sean Spears. His leg hit the roof, and he did like a springboard bump. Oh, that looked rough. Uh, eventually, Joey Janela comes in because it's a it's a fatal three way. So there's no DQ. Joey Janela beats up Sean Spears, so that feud's kind of going to continue, which is okay. Um, so it's Peter Avalon and Darby Allen in the ring. Darby Allen does like some weird like up and out stunner. That was amazing. I wasn't. I don't even know how the physics of that works. They did the, the, the coffin drop. Darby Allen won. Once he kind of see who, who was involved, you know who was losing. Um, and then he challenges. I I'll fight you, John Moxley. Darby Allen, you're gonna die. Um, again, just from the previous matches you've had with others. No, not against John Moxley, Darby Allen. R.I.P. Darby Allen's wrestling career. But for the most part of the match, eh, a ham sandwich. Again, it was really short for a three-way. And you know, once Peter Avalon showed up and who the other two wrestlers were, it was predictable. AEW was good at being not predictable. No, they're getting to be predictable. Then we had Nyla Rose versus Danny Jordan. 
And Jordan Grace, Danny Jordan's not. Well, Danny Jordan's pretty cute looking, though. I like that. I like cute women. And she looks like just an average woman, which is always nice to see. She had a little tummy. Tummies are nice. At least little tummies are nice. I don't like women with, like, six-pack abs. Ugh. More muscular, dense than I am. It's not saying much, but still. Um, for the most part, this was a squash match. Uh, Danny Jordan did try to slap Nyla Rose. Big mistake. Nyla Rose just power bombs her. The jobber tried. It was a squash, squash match, and it's also a can of soup. And then Allie comes out, and they're hyping up Allie. And Allie's not that great of a wrestler. Or she's a great character with Rosemary. Rosemary's not in AEW, though. Uh, she came out to cut a promo. Lights went out. Awesome Kong's there. She collects more hair. Is Allie going to, to have a second death? I don't know. We'll see what happens. And then, of course, Lights... And Awesome Kong likes to collect hair. I think that is something from some culture where they do collect hair. I know with voodoo, they somewhat do that to make voodoo dolls. But we'll, we'll see where this goes. Because um, uh, with Awesome Kong, there's 8,000 ways to die, and she's one of them. Awesome Kong's great. It's going to be good this year. Get, get back in the ring. I think... Their next pay-per-view is fully loaded. Cody, you better be careful. You're going to get your copyright violation from WWE, too. Uh, then Jer there's a Chris Jericho promo. Um, MDF shows up. The, the, all the pyro. Uh, there's banter back and forth. Cody interrupts. Cody gets beat up by both. Eventually, I think MDF is going to challenge Chris Jericho for the belt. We'll see what happens there. And then we have our rubber match. Rematch. Uh, we have Pac versus Hangman Adam Page. And while well, they just hit the rewind button and repeat, they copy and pasted this match because this match really, for the most part, seemed the same. I think with a lot less outside wrestling, but Pac just decides to fly. That's Pac. Bastard Pac likes to fly. Um... <laughs> And there's nothing more basic than a headbutt. Headbutt's one of the best underutilized moves in all of MMA. It is really the hardest part of your body next to your knee. It's not the sharpest. The elbow's the sharpest. But, again, just to cause blunt force damage, it's the skull, then the knee. Um, what else about this? I mean, Pac knows what's, what's happening. Uh, he waits outside. Again, he baits in Adam Hang Hangman Page. <laughs> it was funny because Pac got all the smoke in the entrance. That was so cool. It just really felt like it came from the pay-per-view. Uh, with the exception, there was a little bit more in-ring action. Um, then they were trading bows. Yay! Boo! Yay! Boo! If they were a creative audience, they would have gone, Page! Pac! Page Pac. That actually would have been better. Uh, what else? It was some good stuff, though. Pac, he just started to stomp on the... He hit that snap German suplex. <sighs> that looks like Hangman Page just fell right on his head and knocked him out. Then, of course, Pac, being the bastard Pac, starts to stomp on the back of the head. It's the Black Arrow. But no! He's not satisfied with that. He goes and... Goes in for the Devastator or, or or the Destroyer or whatever he calls it. The Brutalizer, that's it. Goes in for the Brutalizer. And Agman Hen and Page just can't continue. The ref called. I forget if Page tapped or not. Doesn't matter. Adam Hangman Page lost. Pac takes two out of three matches from Adam Hangman Page. Eh. I mean, this was really the best match of the night. And actually, it was really exciting. Uh, it was a good action back and forth. It was fun. It was good. I enjoyed it. This is a surf and turf match.
Wow, this actually... This was the one show that was weird because it felt longer than two hours. Which is not good for AEW because I think AEW and NXT were like neck and neck in ratings. Like one was three point... I want to say one was 3.5, one was 3.0. But that makes sense because NXT is still kind of a really niche thing. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if NXT gets a little bit closer. I'll say the ratings will be uh, 3.3 and 3.2. I'll say it's only going to be like a point one difference or even that. And, and that could be either way. Um, backstage, LAX, just fight the Bucks. Street fight. Pretty cool. Um, we find out that Orange Cassidy just hangs out in the bathrooms. That was weird. Uh, Brandon Cutler did try to go to the save. He eventually gets beat up for his troubles. They tried to kill one of the Jacksons through the table. Again, and you can almost tell it was a crash mat. Only because the way the one Jackson brother... I'm not going to pretend I know which one's which. But when he fell through... You could almost tell it was a crash mat there because when he fell through, he he went down, hit something, kind of bounced up, and then and then went back down. Hey, at least they keep the wrestler safe, so that's so that's not too bad. Uh, then they did that for a big chunk of time. But we'll see what happens. Maybe there'll be another lights out event at the next pay per view. It'll just be LAX versus the Young Bucks, and I guess the Young Bucks they have to win something eventually. Then we have the main event of the evening. You have SCU uh, taking on Sammy Guevara and Chris Jericho. And this was weird because it went through commercial. Uh, SCU's entrance went through commercial. And Christopher Daniels trying to hype up the crowd with that mic. It wasn't going good, though. Um, at least, thankfully, Kazarian. Didn't die for a change. He's like realizes the error of his wrestling ways. Uh, but it was SEU versus Sammy Guevara and Chris Jericho. Uh, there was about 10 minutes left. Eventually, what's going to happen and what's going to turn a lot of people off from AEW is that one of these main events are going to be finished on YouTube. If you're watching TV, you're like, I don't want to go to YouTube. Bam. So, you know what? Last time they did this to me, not watching them. So, we'll see what happens. It's one of the things they keep on teasing. People are not going to watch, or they're going to tease it so often. It's going to be that idea of the boy who called Wolf. And people will be like, oh, why watch anyway? I'll just watch it on YouTube. Or if they do it too often again, they'll say, why watch it here? I'll just watch the end on YouTube. Instead of spending two hours, I can spend like five minutes and just be like, oh, okay. Uh, but this was a definitely tag team advantage for SE, where they are, the again, the tag team, where Sammy Guevara and Jericho, even though they're part of a faction, they're not really used to tagging together. Uh, SE, again, they do amazing double team work. Again, it, they do a lot of chain double team work, too, which is a lot different. From the standard double teams, where again, Sammy Guevara and Jericho might be in the ring together and they're hitting a guy, but it's, it's not really chain wrestling. They're each kind of doing their own thing. They're not build, building and working off each other. Uh, Hagar eventually gets his cheap shots and uh, Sammy flies off the top rope. Jericho just says, Kazarian, whap. Uh, and when Zarian realized that Hagar was getting involved. He decided to splash. Hagar barely caught him, though. Uh, eventually, Scorpio Sky rolled up Chris Jericho in an inside cradle. The most devastating wrestling finisher ever. Even more so than the Canadian Destroyer, the Pile Driver, the Macho Elbow. Even more vicious than the Hulk Hogan leg drop is the inside cradle. And SE retained their title. It was kind of obvious, again, that they were going to retain their championship. Generally, you're not going to have a double champion unless there's some really good reason why. SE, it was about a few weeks ago. If they were going to drop them to anyone, they would have dropped them to the Lucha Brothers because you're not really having 
toss the other tag teams there just to win the belt, even though the one is Le Champion. So that, folks, is an episode of AEW in the books. And actually, that match, I'll say what it was fun enough. It was a cheeseburger of a match. Oh, I forgot one thing. Let's see here. Let me see his name. I know on Discord someone responded to me about something. Yeah, let's see here. What's so it wasn't that? Okay. Then I'll eventually have to make characters of, of Bum Slicks and Dan Blaze. Let's see here. I remember that because I posted something. And now I forgot where it was. Barbie Allen. Obviously, couldn't have been that important. I mean, it was close. Oh, yeah. Big Smoke. Thank you for your comments, sir. Again, it's always good to interact with people on Discord. You, sir, just got kicked out, though? And that was AEW. Um, overall, it was a ham. It was it was a cheeseburger of a show. Again, two more wrestling events this coming up for me, Hobo Tom. On Friday, I'll probably try to get up the SmackDown. Review when I can because I do have to go to work early Saturday morning. And then Saturday night, you can see this guy, Hobo Tom, here live in Daytona Beach at the Daytona Beach Multicultural Center, probably sometime around 6 30 ish. Yeah, because I don't have to work till Sunday, and I don't think I'm working Saturday, Saturday either, which is good because I work Thursday, Friday. That'll kind of be brutal, but not that bad. But so you can see this guy, Hobo Tom. And you get, again, if you say hi to me, I'll even let you shout out something. Almost whatever you say, like. Again, don't be naughty. And don't curse outrightly, I guess. You can say, What's up, snitches? That's pretty good. Uh, to all your snitches out there. And you'll actually be posted online, too. So that'll be. So again, that's a little reward if you say hi. You're like, hey, don't you do? Yeah. yeah you want to give your shout out? Yeah. Ready? Give your shout out. <laughs> Trust me, there's nothing I do that's scripted. All that paper.